Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and let's continue with the series on subquery network. Now till this point we have seen what is subquery, then we have seen the participants, we have talked about how do we do the setup for the subquery and then we have written our first code plus we have also published that first code on the subquery network. And then if it is published on the subquery network, anyone can see the data, anyone can access it. Everything is working, right? But then in the earlier project, the first project which we did, we did it for the blocks. This time we are doing it for the events. So basically, if you remember we, in the mapping file we did, we worked with the blocks. Now what I want is, I want to handle the events. That means every time there's an event on the Polkadot network, I want to get the hold on it. Maybe something like a transfer. If you are transferring the amount from one account to the account, that's one event. Now, how do we do the tracking for that? So we'll write a code, a simple code for the transfers, and we'll do that from the scratch in case if you missed the earlier videos. In fact, I would suggest you to watch the earlier videos to get the setup done, because in this video, I'm not going to do the setup. I'm just going to start writing the code. So first thing, how do we check if everything is working? So I have opened my VS code. Of course, it should be in a folder. I'm using subquery transfer, or subq transfer as my project name. In fact, not a project name, but a folder name. And inside this folder, I'm going to create a project for the subquery. Uh, so basically we need to open the terminal first just to verify. So here I will say subql. If this is working in your machine, that means everything is good. Say enter. And you can see we got some commands here. That means everything is working. Great. The subquery is there. And in subquery, in the subquery uh, command, you can see we have uh, build option, code gen, and we have seen this thing. Uh, now what I will do is, let me clear this, and let me create a project using subquery. Uh, so how do we do that? It's very simple. Actually, you can use subql command and simply say init. The moment you say init, it will create a project for you. Of course, it will ask you for some, certain things. Uh, the first thing it will asking you is the project name. I will say this is my sub QT, which is sub credit transfer. I will say enter and it will ask me for the network. In fact, I will also suggest you to try out different networks here, which is Avalanche and Terra. I'm going to continue with substrate. I will say enter. In this, it is asking for the network. Uh, network here, it was, earlier uh, it was network family, now it is network. In the substrate, I'm going with Polkadot. And now, do you want a customized a project from the git link which you mentioned or do you want to create a starter project I will go for starter in this case and it will ask you for certain things example RPC endpoint I just don't want to change it I just want to go with the uh, dictionary point which is already mentioned go with that next the project structure do you want a default or do you want to have specify some git repository again default center then the author name okay I'm the author, not exactly, but since I'm going to change something, I will use it. And plus everything is mentioned in the subquery documentation. You can also refer that. Uh, I will say Naveen and description. I don't want to change it. Keep it as it is. See if you don't want to change anything, just say enter. It normally works. And then the version, default, license, default, and done. Your subquery project is all ready. But again, this is a bare bones service or bare bones code. I want to add the code in this project and just to reiterate what we have learned before uh, whenever you want to fetch the data from a subquery project you need to do that with the help of GraphQL uh, because you can specify what data ex exact data you want to fetch and in this we are so by default they are giving starter entity which we are not going to use and it is giving entity uh, because that's how you represent what you want to fetch and the fields by default field is field one field two will not mention that we'll change it with the data which we want and anything else this is your project.yaml this is where you're configuring your entire project and this is important uh, let me just close this subquery terminal for a time being so if you remember we had block and we had event as well so we have two kind here in fact we have three we have also have call handler but we'll ignore that for this uh, we have block and we have event. So in the earlier video, we have talked about blocks. This time we are going for the event. So this is what we are going to work with. And the method is not deposit. It will be transfer. So we'll change it accordingly. And based on this particular GraphQL, we'll also need a model, a type here, which as of now, I don't think it's there in mapping. We don't have it. But we have this mapping handler.ts where you have all the methods or functions mentioned. In this, we are not going to use block handle, so that will be removed. And we are only going to work with handle event, not even handle call. Okay, that's the uh, bare bone what you get here, and we're going to make changes in this. We're not going to change anything in Docker Compose. 
because everything default services are running and we are not even going to publish this we are going to run this on my local machine just to see everything is working but in case if you want to publish this project again we have done that in the previous video the same steps will be working with all the projects which you have done so don't worry it is applicable for this project as well awesome now once you have all this thing in place the first thing we are going to do is we are going to change our graphql in fact before we start with graphql what i will do is i will just move to my subquery project and here we need to say npm because we need some modules here to make it work so basically we have this package.json and we need all this content so i will just go back here and we'll say run script oh i'm just saying install npm install and done it is installing all the dependency modules you, you want in your project and it should create a folder called node modules and it will take some time so by the time it is doing the installation let's look at the package.json just to get the idea what it is getting for you uh, so these are, these are the dependencies we need to get the polkadot apis we need uh, subquery types typescript module and the client as well and anything else no and these are the scripts available for us we will we are going to use codegen for generating the uh, mapping file and the docker to start it on the local machine so you can see it is downloading the modules and you can see it is here we got all these required modules which came here and of course we don't even have to look at them and that's done you can see we got all the modules and now let's start editing our graphql now there are things we need here first of all i don't want to say start an entity i want to say this is a transfer and this will be an entity what are things we have to change ID will remain ID as it is. We are going to change these fields here. So let me remove them and let me type those things quickly. So basically we need amount as well. Amount will be of type big int. Then we need a block number which will be of type big int again. Then we need from and we need to. Uh, so both of this will be of type string. So I will say string. And that's it. So the transfer we are basically focusing on. Of course ID will be there everywhere but then we want amount what amount is transferred, the block number, and from to, so the sender and receiver, and that's it. This is the entity, but then based on this particular GraphQL, I want to create a mapping file. And of course, you don't have to type that mapping file, your, uh, your tools will give it to you. So let me just clear here. Now this tool I'm talking about, so you just have to say NPM, and make sure that you have Node and NPM installed in your machine, otherwise this will not work. And to know how we did that, you can just watch the setup video and you will get the idea. So here we'll say npm and we'll say run script. Uh, what script you are trying to run? So basically if you go back to package.json, uh, we have this command here. Sorry, not this one. So in the package.json, you, you can see we have code gen, uh, which we are going to use. So we'll go, come back here and say code gen, and it will create a mapping file for you, which is done. So you can see we have types in modules and we got transfer.ts, which is matching with the uh, GraphQL, which you created. So in the GraphQL, we have ID, which is there, amount, block number, from, and to, everything is there. And we have some methods to make it work. You see, we have all these methods here. Awesome. So even those things are done. And now it's time to change our project.yaml because remember in this, we need to make sure that you only work with one particular handle, not two, not three. We are only focusing on one here. And one more check, you know, uh, when I, I faced this issue, I also mentioned that before. Basically, you should have either chain ID or you should have Genesis ID. So if you have both, I mean Genesis hash or uh, chain ID, delete one. Either delete chain ID or delete uh, Genesis hash. It should work. Sometimes it will have both in this network tab and it will create issues. Okay, so we want to focus only on the event. So let me do one, let me do one thing. Let me remove this particular block and I will also remove the call handle or handle call. And one thing I want to change instead of having deposit, I will say transfer. That's it, because we want to track only transfers. So this is how you basically filter the events because on the network, you'll be having multiple events. We are focusing only on the transfer and that's why we have transfer here. Okay, and that's done. Let's go back because now we are changing it here. We need to also change the TypeScript file we have. And as I mentioned before, we just need to focus only on the handle event, not on the block. Remove the block part and remove the call part. Even that is deleted. Okay, you can see this is a bit blurred because it is not used. So we can remove this part. Extrinsics are not going to be used. Even the block is not going to be used. So we can remove that part. And here, the, we don't have the entity as starter entity. We have it as transfer. In fact, logically, we should also say transfer entity. That should be a good name to our 
a mapping file, but that's type. That should be, there should be enough. Transfer should be enough. And that's it. Just focus on this particular function and we are good. Okay. So basically we need to make some changes, right? So the save will remain save, but then uh, let me just remove and let me retype everything. How do we handle this? Now, first of all, we want to handle all the transfers, right? All the, uh, all the transfer between the sender and the receiver. And for this, when you basically need to get some values from the event. So every time there's a, there's an event on the network, this, this is where you will get your data, this variable, event variable. So using this event variable, I can just, or not the variable, but the reference, we can get the value. So the first thing I want to get is from, or from where you're getting this. So you can say event dot data. So transfer would be the first value. So I will say this is zero. So this data will be having multiple JSON, nested JSON. So we can specify, I want the first section of that. Then const two is equal to event dot event dot data. And this will be one. And then the last we will have is the amount. So I will say amount event dot event dot data. And then we can say two. Simple, right? Now, once you got this data, I also want to get hold on the transfer itself. So in this case, instead of you know typing it, I got a code ready with me. Again, this will be advantages when you use the documentation. So this is how you get the hold on the transfer. So basically we want the transfer here. And now for that transfer, you need to provide the, the ID as well. So in this case, you can mention this and you will get the ID. Now, how do I know how do we get the transfer object? If you go to transfer.ts, when you want to get the object, can you see that? We have a constructor which takes the ID and that's what we are mentioning here. So when you mention the ID, you will get the transfer object. So basically we got the uh, center address, receiver address, the amount and the transfer object as well. Uh, but then transfer object don't have a block number. We have to also add that. So we'll say transfer dot block number. We have to assign this value. And again, even this value will be coming from the event dot block dot block dot header dot number dot two big int so basically we need to convert that into big int because the type we have mentioned for the block number if you can see yeah block number is big int so we have to convert it into big int okay so transfer object is still empty it's just having the id and the block number and all this value i want to assign to the transfer object as well so what i can do is i can say transfer dot uh, from this value will be coming from from dot Okay, we need to convert that into two string because we just got a constant value. The same thing can be done for two. So I will say transfer dot two equal to two dot two string. And we need to also get hold on the amount. So I will say transfer dot amount, but this time it's not a string. So it is say amount dot. Uh, basically we need to also convert this into a type as balance. So I will say as balance and we'll say to begin. Okay, so basically we got the hold on the transfer object and once you have this object at the end, you can simply say save, but then that should be with the help of await. I will say transfer dot save. That's it. Because all these methods are mentioned in the TriScript file. You can see we have the save method here, which will do the stuff for us. So this is done. So every time there's an event in the network, which is transfer, of course, we have applied the filter, right? So this will be called and you will you got the hold of the transfer. Okay, this is good. And now it's time to run this code. So before running, we have to make sure that you build this project. Now, how do you build this project? So let me just clear this here. I will say clear. Now, how do you build this? So you can use YAN or you can use NPM. So I'm using NPM here. So I will say run script. And to run this code, basically we need to, oh sorry, to build this code, you can simply use a build command, which is actually mentioned in the package.json. It is trying to build it and done. There's no error. First time, you know, when I was doing this. So finally it worked on the first instance itself. Great. Now, once it is built, it's time to run this code. So how do we run this? So before you, you run this code, you have to make sure that your Docker service is running. And as of now in my machine, Docker is not running. So I will say Docker, open Docker. It will take some time to open it. Okay. Uh, it is still starting, but then how do we start? So once your Docker is, Docker is started, in fact, you can also check the status, uh, but then Okay, so my Docker just got popped up and let me remove all the old uh, containers here. I love to keep it things clean. Now, once your Docker is up, you can simply start your Docker and you can do that with the help of NPM run script and you can say start Docker. Again, all these commands are mentioned in the package.json. You can verify from there what command you have to use and you have to say enter and done. It is making sure my containers are, or the images are up and running. I'm basically downloading the images now. Again, it will take some time to download. 
Okay, it seems it is done. Let me just verify once. Oh, it's still downloading. It's still doing its work. So both this subquery node and sub and Postgres is up and running. The GraphQL engine is still not running. Oh, GraphQL engine is done. Pulling done, but it's not started the GraphQL engine yet. Okay, when GraphQL engine is started and okay, everything looks up and running. And now how do we access it? Of course, your Docker is running, the image are running. How do we access those things? And for that, let's go to the browser and say localhost colon 3000. And okay, this is where you can fire the GraphQL queries. Okay, now instead of typing it here, so how do we access that? So basically we have to use GraphQL. So I want to fire the query here. Now this query is specifically designed for the transfers. So we are doing it for the transfers. And what value I want to fetch? So basically I want to fetch the first, let's say 10, and I want to order by, uh, let's say I want to order by amount because I want to know who did the biggest transaction here and in descending order, of course. So it will order everything, but then what data you want from the transfers? So I was in nodes and in this you can mention what data you want. Of course, I want the ID. I want to get the amount. In fact, we have mentioned all those things there, right? I also want a block number. I also want from, and I also want to, that's it. I want all this detail. And of course, all, only those details we have, we have asked our GraphQL to fetch. Now, if you caught everything, just say run and it will give you the data. So you can see this is the ID and this is the amount. Since we are saying descending out of the amount, we got the biggest amount on the top here, right? And if you scroll down, the number will go down, right? So you can see we got, this is the number. I don't even know how many zeros are there, ignore it. So yeah, that's how you do this. So we are basically trying to track all the amounts here. And if I go back to my VS code, you can see it is still pulling all the data which is required. Cool, so that's how you run your GraphQL and you can fetch the data. So in the earlier videos, we have talked about the blog. This time we have talked about the events. And I just want to know from you how much you are enjoying this uh, subquery network uh, videos. Let me know in the comment section and also try it out. It's quite fun. Don't just watch videos, practice it. I know every new technology will make you smarter. That's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for other videos. Bye-bye.